So a student just messaged me and said that she took her GED test and she got a problem like this on it. So let's take a look. It says find the equation of the line that runs through the point negative 1, 4 and is perpendicular to y equals negative 3 halves x plus 2. Okay, first of all, let's break this question down to see what it's looking for. We are looking for the equation of the line. Find the equation of the line. Now you'll know if you've ever seen a GED formula sheet. If you haven't, I suggest you print one out right now. I've got them up on 100 different places on my site, or you can just Google it, GED formula sheet. It's widely available. The exact sheet that you're going to get on the test, you're going to see two different equations of a line. The first one on the sheet is the slope intercept form of the equation. Okay, This is the form that you're going to want your final answer in and that says y equals mx plus b. Again, I don't need to have this memorized. I just pulled this off the formula sheet. Now what I want to point out to you is that this y equals mx plus b for it to be an actual line right now this is just a general line it's any line with all these letters but for it to be an actual specific line you're going to have to plug in two numbers you're going to have to figure out what m is and plug it in and remember that the m in the slope intercept form stands for the slope and mathematicians aren't very creative, so you can imagine if the M stands for the slope, and this is called the slope intercept form, then the B must stand for an intercept, and indeed it does. The B is the Y intercept. So, in order to have this be a formula or an equation of a specific line and not just any line, M and B have to be numbers. And so let us work on getting something that looks like that, but M and B are numbers. And so what we're always going to want to try to start with is the slope. Okay. Now, so the question really, the first question to me needs to be, um, what's the slope of my line? Well, there's a real quick way to find out the slope here, and it's based on this phrase here. It, we find out that our line is perpendicular to some other line. Uh, I don't, this is not my line, this is some other line, but what I know is that my line is perpendicular to this line. So what does it mean to be perpendicular? If two lines are perpendicular, they cross each other at a right angle. And that's interesting on paper, but what does it mean to us as far as an equation is concerned? Well, as it turns out, if two lines are per perpendicular, when th their slopes will be related in an interesting way. So perpendicular lines, and I'll erase my little drawing here. And this is the key concept to know. In fact, I should probably do, be doing this in another color. Let's do this. So this is the key concept you just have got to understand. Perpendicular lines, they have slopes that are opposites in two ways. One, they're opposite sign. So if one of the lines is has a positive um, slope, then the other one will have a negative so slope. So two things. First of all, they're going to be opposite signs. Uh, but another way they're going to be opposites, remember that slope is a fraction of rise over run. Well, their rise and their run will be flipped, and so they're going to be what is known as reciprocals. The flip of a fraction is its reciprocal. And I always struggle to spell that word, reciprocal. Again, that's just a fancy word for flip. So let's take a look. Our particular line has, remember the slope is the number with x. There's the slope of this other line they gave me, negative 3 halves. Well, if my line is perpendicular to the slope, then my line is going to have this slope with a change of sign and a flip. And so my line 
is going to be positive because that one was negative and it's going to be two thirds because that one was three halves. I just flip it upside down. Okay, great. Now, there's a couple of different ways I can do the next step. So if your teacher did a different way, um, it's, it's fine. It does not matter which way you go about this. But what I'm going to do now, instead of um, trying to solve for B like some teachers will do, and there's, again, it's a great method. I use it all the time. But since we're given the other uh, equation of a line formula right here, on our GED formula sheet, I'm going to use it. So the very next line under the slope intercept form says it's the point slope form of a line. And it looks like this, y minus y1 equals m times the quantity. That's what you say when you have those parentheses there, m times the quantity of x minus x1. Now, students don't like this formula because it looks ugly, but it's actually really easy to plug into and really easy to use. So don't panic. Now remember that this formula has a name too. It's known as the point slope form. Why? Because this thing will work for you if you have a point. And we do have a point. Right up here we had a point that was on our line. But you don't only have to have a point, you have to have a point and a slope. And we do have a slope. We just solved for the slope. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the point that I was given and the slope that I have into this formula and something really cool is gonna happen. So let's try it. When you do it, you're gonna keep y, y. And this y1 here is the y value from your point. So come up to your point and remember, the first one is an x value, the second one's a y value. So the y value of my point is gonna be four. And that is equal to, now this is my m, I just solved for m my slope, so I'm gonna put that two thirds and that's gonna be times the quantity, and you'll keep x, x, and this x1 here will be this x value for my point. Now notice, my x value here is negative one. You need to be really careful because a lot of students go, oh, it's already negative, I'll just put a one right here. They just do that. And if you do that, you're gonna be wrong. Be very careful. There was a, this minus, there was this minus right here from this formula, but this x is also negative. And so what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna have x minus negative one. And if you're really lazy like a mathematician, you already know that minus minus turns into a plus, and so you often just change it right from the start. Now I'm gonna close that. And now this problem is super, super easy. I mean really easy to simplify, especially because you're gonna get a GED calculator to do it. So um, there's no simplifying to do on the right, right there. So I'm gonna leave that that way. There is some simplifying I know how to do on the left though. I know how to apply the distributive property. Let's go ahead and multiply. Well, what's 2 thirds times x? It's just 2 thirds x. You stick the fraction in front and the x behind, no big deal. And what's 2 thirds times positive one? Well, of course, anything times one is itself, so it'll be 2 thirds. I know some of you guys are freaking about fractions, but we haven't had to do any gross fractions yet. Now, the very, very last step is going to be to get y alone. We call that solving for y. Why? Well, if you get it solved for y, it'll be in that form I told you I needed it in. The y equals mx plus b form is the form of a line where y is alone. And that's the form you want your final answer to be in. So let's go ahead and add four. Now, remember the rule of algebra. You can do whatever you want to one side, and I'm choosing to add four because it's the opposite of subtracting four, as long as you do it to both sides. So I'm gonna jump over my equal sign and I'm gonna add four right there. And the reason why I'm adding it right there is because I want to make sure I'm adding constant terms, plain old numbers, with constant terms, plain old numbers. I'm not going to try to combine 4 with x's. Okay, On this side, negative 4 and positive 4 cancel, so my y's alone. That's just what I wanted. Perfect. My 2 thirds x is not going to change through addition. I can't add a 4 to that. This math you can feel free to do in your calculator, okay? But let's see. I think I know what this is. 4 is the same as 12 thirds. And some of you guys are going, Kate, how do I do that in my calculator? Yeah, your um, TI30XS calculator will do a fractions for you. And that's plus 14 thirds. Okay, I didn't need any stinking calculator. And now I have uh, my line. It has the 
perpendicular slope to the other line, and then I plugged in to find my B. Be careful, some students make the mistake of trying to steal the B from the other line. They'll be completely unrelated, and you will not need that number at all. There's my answer. I'm done. I have the M plugged in, I have the B plugged in, and X and Y stay X and Y in the equation of a line.